Avada moved to Toronto in 2015 in search of adventure and to experience the legendary Canadian outdoors. She is an environmental and entrepreneur, a low-waste advocate, and founder of Bike Seed, a Toronto-based family cycling group. She's volunteered with Evergreen Brickworks as a mountain biking coach, and being car-free, you guys should get together, <laughs> um, she regularly commutes by bike and rides with her two-year-old. Please welcome Agatha. The technology works for me. Uh, welcome everyone, thank you so much for having me here and, and it will be a hard act to follow after all these wonderful talks, uh, but I'll do my best. So um, I'm going to uh, tell you a bit about my um, two-wheeled tour of Southeast Asia. Um, and I, before I dive into it, I wanted just to say that I wanted to dedicate this talk to my husband Sean, the guy uh, on sling. <laughs> <laughs> without whom um, I wouldn't be here talking about all the cycling and the, the tour would have never happened. So thank you, Sean. It works. So in 2014, I made a dream come true. I took a five-month uh, break, a career break, uh, to travel with uh, Sean. And we um, cycled toward around Southeast Asia, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and uh, Vietnam and uh, finished off in, uh, in Bali to do some surfing. And uh, we covered 5,000 kilometers by bikes and another five by buses, trains, um, boats, and importantly, tuk-tuks. And uh, that trip truly changed my life. So before, before the trip, I had a pretty cozy, nice life in London. I lived, I lived in a nice part of London. I was in a new great relationship with Sean. And uh, I had a secure job, I had my friendships, my hobbies, my, my routines. <coughs> routines. <laughs> and, um, but something in me was, uh, was restless and I needed to change. And it was because actually when I looked closer at my life, I was, I was really unhappy in my job. I was making myself miserable helping uh, corporations make money. I, um, I was getting overwhelmed with uh, London's fast pace and uh, the rat race and both Sean and I lost close re um, relatives just a few months before uh, the trip so both of us needed um, some headspace, we needed to step away um, and figure out what we wanted from our lives and what we wanted to do uh, next. So we decided to go travelling and I had been um, saving money for those travels for years and uh, with all those amazing um, places out there, it was a hard choice, but we decided to go to Southeast Asia. Uh, Southeast Asia being uh, pretty safe and uh, accessible on a lower budget. Um, so here is, here is our route that uh, I can't take any credit for the route planning. Sean did all the route planning and uh, got our bikes uh, ready. So uh, we started off in Phuket, uh, rode north, crossed the border to Laos and started riding south again all the way to Cambodia, uh, crossed, the, um, crossed the border and rode north again to uh, the north of uh, Vietnam. And that was the mix of uh, bicycle, cycling and, and the other modes of transport. And I still remember the first hours when we landed in uh, Thailand. The, the feeling of anticipation, excitement, five months of adventuring ahead of us, mixed with the humid air that hits you when you uh, leave the plane. And then uh, after a, a, a rather unexciting ride from the airport, we hit our first beach. It was February in London, so winter, pretty dull, grey, depressing, and there we were with the sun on our faces, ready to start uh, adventuring. It was, it was super exciting, obviously. Of course, the first challenges uh, turn out pretty quickly. So um, there, <laughs> there I am with a very happy face climbing one of the steep hills in uh, 30 plus uh, degrees. And the, the heat one was one of the killers for us. Both of us uh, grew up and are used to uh, temperate climates. And there we were cycling um, in 30 plus degrees. Most of most of the time, and I'm te I tell you, I'm not great when it's really hot. So until this day, I don't really know I how I survived five months cycling in that heat. Um, 
but the the heat was something that really pushed our bodies to to their limits at times. There was one uh, day in Laos where um, it was actually Sean. He was feeling unwell. He was uh, he wanted to sleep all the time. At some point, he actually started hallucinating. And uh, I was pretty scared because we were on a tiny river island far away from any decent healthcare. Um, uh, we've somehow figured out that he had a heat stroke and with plenty of sleep and hydration, he got well within 24 hours and we were ready to carry on. But uh, the, heat, the heat was really hard for us and, and we lived for moments like this. This is also in Laos on one of the dirt roads um, where a truck spraying the road happened to be passing us by and I don't know how many times we stopped to let the truck go by and then we cycle again and the, and the two guys inside were just looking at us and smiling, trying to figure out what the hell we were doing, uh, what we were just trying to cool down from the heat. Um, another big challenge for me personally, being the, the outdoorsy person and nature lover that I am, was the environmental degradation that we witnessed on our travels and uh, in Asia. And you probably are very well aware of the um, plastic pollution and the waste problem that plagued the, the, the whole, uh, everywhere now, but uh, in Asia it's particularly uh, prevalent and as cyclists you know that from the seat of when you're a cyclist there's really nothing that um, stands between you and the environment that you're cycling through so you just witness so much more from your from the seat of the bike and we were there and um, that is also in Laos and we we're riding through some beautiful beautiful lush green forests uh, which seemed so pristine um, and then we would see those heaps of trash just, just lying on the side of the road dumped there, uh, just like that. And also every single beach we went to, and in five months in Asia we went to quite a few beaches, um, there was no single beach that didn't have plastic pollution. And it was, um, it was heartbreaking, it was eye-opening, it's quite different watching these things on your newsfeed, on your phone or even TV, and very different when you're actually cycling through that. And um, it also made us think about our um, what part we were taking that because we were actually part of the problem. We, you could see us in, in Thailand sipping our uh, ice chocolates from uh, through plastic straws from plastic bags. So uh, we don't do that anymore, of, of course. And it was something that sparked the um, motivated me to do more than just be a passive observer and actually start taking some actions. Um, but I'll tell you about this a little bit later. Um, so apart from the big challenges, there were obviously some wonderful moments. Uh, again, being on bikes, and, and um, uh, the first speaker alluded to that, you are so much closer to everything, and, and you've got some wonderful interactions with the locals. So here are some uh, kids, and every time we would ride through a village, the kids would run out and wave at us, looking at these two strange cyclists. Uh, passing by, and uh, and we also really, in, on bikes, being independent, we really relied on the help from the locals every time we had a breakdown, and we had quite a few breakdowns uh, on the way. Um, one of the most inspirational encounters on this trip was uh, meeting Olga. Uh, she was another uh, cyclist who we met just a few weeks into our uh, Thai leg. And because we were all cycling in the same direction, we decided to cycle together. And Olga also decided to, uh, also was taking a career break, trying to figure out what to do with her life. At the time, she was an architect. And she was also a zero waste blogger, and she was really walking the talk. So um, here's Olga on, on her bike. And uh, so she would use her Tupperware and have her, is that my timer? No. <laughs> she. <laughs> She would, um, with her reusable cloths and cutlery, etc., etc., and she was very successful at refusing all the plastic. And I'm telling you, it's not that easy to refuse plastic in Asia because everything comes in plastic. And seeing how she was um, traveling in a zero waste way made us think, hold on, I'm sure we can do things better ourselves. And um, so quickly we implemented some changes in the way we traveled, and here is. Uh, Sean with his tapor and there is, you can see obviously a bottle and a, a bag and we got some cutlery and we started seeing results pretty quickly and those were really easy changes to make. Um, here I'm shop do, buying some fruit from one of the local sellers with my uh, cloth 
toes. And not only did we implement those changes uh, when we were traveling for ourselves, but we actually uh, managed to convince one of the hotels in Vietnam to install a, a water fountain so that other travelers could refill their water bottles. And they sent us an email just a few weeks after we finished to say that they did it and people were using it. And, and obviously, then we started thinking about what to do uh, in London. Um, so, the at the end of the trip, I was really, really proud to have cycled 5,000 uh, kilometers without really uh, much prep. When uh, when we came up with the idea to to go cycling, Sean was really well set up to do it because he was. Cycling, cycle commuting. He was a mountain biker. Um, he rode in the Pyrenees and Italy. I did none of that, and uh, I was horrified of uh, urban cycling. And uh, I just barely restarted mountain biking again. And there I was riding 5,000 kilometers around Southeast Asia. So the trip really showed me that um, when you set your mind on something, you can you can achieve things greater than you expect of yourself. And uh, when you throw yourself into something new like that, that is maybe greater than you, you can actually have some great adventures and uh, learn a lot in, in the way. So when we, got back to, uh, when we got back to London, we changed a few things in our lives. I got a job for an environmental not-for-profit and had a job that I actually loved. Um, that I was sad to leave behind when we left London to move to Canada. Uh, both of us volunteered with a few environmental not-for-profits that, uh, uh, that were dealing with the waste problem. We hugely reduced our waste uh, at home, and uh, I started cycle commuting in London, and I got completely addicted to, to, to city riding, and it became, became sort of my lifeline, and suddenly getting to, to the office was fun rather than... Uh, yeah, catching on the London tube is not that much fun. Um, and so now here, six years later, six years after the trip, I'm an environmental entrepreneur working on launching a, a zero waste platform. And you will often see me, um, as Joy said, riding around uh, Toronto on, on the bike with our little boy, um, was happily asleep there in the, on the bike, and Sean and I recently launched a family cycling group trying to spread the love for cycling and encourage other families to, uh, to jump on the bikes, to, to experience that fun of being on the bike uh, just as, as we are, and none of, us would have, none of that would have happened without that amazing uh, trip around Southeast Asia. Thank you very much. What do you do differently now that you have kids on your handlebars instead of bags of fruit? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do differently? Um, I think I am definitely much more mindful. Um, when we were cycling around Southeast Asia, it was in, in some ways it was easier because often we would be on those empty roads that went on for kilometers and uh, we were to a certain extent mindful but we were mainly chatting about how we would change the world after we got back to London uh, whereas now being in a busy city and with a little one I am super aware of what's going on around me and always trying to predict what the drivers around me are going to do and and just really paying attention to what's going on around me Um, I bicycle tour quite a bit, and I've had a different experience with garbage uh, mm -hmm. in, in some of the countries I visited. And um, my feeling is that they don't—they're not. Some of these countries are not rich enough to cart it away. Um, and yes. if all the garbage that was produced on my street was on the corner, um, maybe we would take it more seriously. Yes. Um, that was my experience. Mm. Like that feeling of. Uh, Many Western Europeans that we would see um, would complain about the garbage, and I never did because I felt they probably produced a fraction of what we do in rich countries. Mm. Um, 
but it's more physical because yes. we have the money to hire. They, but I, that I don't, I've not been to Asia. I've not been mm. to places I've been to. But that, that was my experience and my feeling about uh, traveling in work. Mm. No, you, you got it right. And and actually, when we spoke to um, some of the locals, they were telling us about the lack of infrastructure to deal with the garbage. They were saying that they they just said know where to put it or. Uh, there was one story where I think that the uh, the owner said that they took away the, the trash and then dumped it in the river further down. Mm -hmm. So not only do they not have the infrastructure to deal with their own waste, uh, but also they have to deal with our waste because, um, especially now that China is no longer accepting our waste, countries like Canada and uh, the UK are sending the, some of their waste to uh, the developing countries for processing and recycling. And then some of it does get recycled, and some of it gets burned. Some of it ends up in uh, in the environment. So uh, that's why it was we were thinking we are part of the problem, and we became more mindful of our own waste. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for <coughs> tying your talk to the waste issue. Um, so I teach. It, it is visible here. It is. It's all around us, and we ignore it. Um, last spring, I took my group of grade one two students down to the lake, we picked up garbage for only 40 minutes mm. in the rocks. And a woman was getting her um, pictures taken for her wedding. And it looked gorgeous. But then you take the closer look. And my kids picked up over a thousand straws in 40 minutes. Mm. 18 small children picked up a wow. thousand straws in 40 minutes, plus three huge garbage bags of stuff. Yeah. And it's there. and. We have this chat now and then we say, plastic pollution, what's the solution? Stop using it. Yes. Yeah. Cut it at the source. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that and thank you for um, uh, teaching the, the young generations about this. That's really important. We'll connect. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share my stuff.